Joel here from Rainbow Nutrients R&D. In today's episode, we're gonna revisit that test hop garden that I showed you a couple weeks ago. Now, I have to be honest with you, we used a little bit of movie magic with regards to the amount of time that's passed between when we transplanted those and uh, this video now. It's actually been about two months and we've seen some amazing results with our product line. Also, due to the speed that these things grow, I've had to use a little bit of creative techniques in order to manage the size and growth of these plants. They grow about six to eight inches a day, which is absolutely insane. Either way, I'm gonna give you guys a couple tips just to let you know how things go and keep things manageable in a home garden so that you guys can grow hops for yourself. All right, come with me, I'll show you how my garden's doing. Okay, I'm back in my home test garden, and as you can see here, we've had some pretty significant uh, differences in results. And you can see there on the right, uh, that's a perfect example of what happens when you get good genetics versus uh, something where it's struggling to get the root mass going up. So the one on the right there, that's Centennial. It's done absolutely fantastic and it's really responded well to our nutrients. And uh, as you can see here, it's grown all the way up to the roof. Now, these other three here, this is pretty standard. So in first year hop growth, uh, usually you're struggling to build up some root mass. And so uh, you can't really expect a lot of growth in the first year. It's the second and third year where you're gonna be yielding most of your, uh, uh, your hop flowers. And then in the front here, I've just got five other varieties that I picked up and I wanted to get a nice enough variety so that I could start playing around with the, uh, the genetics of these plants and uh, seeing if I can do some crossbreeding. But I've got five other varieties and I've been cutting these back as soon as I see them grow any higher than say four, four to five inches. So uh, this allows me to uh, get the root to uh, uh, keep growing into the pot and then down the road if I wanted to swap these out one of the ones in my bed, I could just pull out the entire root mass, transplant it into the, uh, the box and it, it uh, responds fairly well, uh, being that you, you would buy a rhizome of these varieties, uh, which is just a chunk of root. So if I, I can literally take this out of the pot, put it into the bed, and uh, swap them out uh, however I want. So I'm going to keep these on the shelf in the garage, uh, or uh, I might even keep them close to the house during the wintertime just so that they, uh, they sprout up next spring. So in order to gain a little bit more vertical, I've uh, constructed this uh, tomato trellis, mini trellis if you will. I just cut off the bottom rungs of a, um, uh, a tomato cage, or actually I cut it right through the middle so there's a little bit uh, uh, left on the bottom of the, uh, the wires and then there's two rings so then the ring on the bottom just basically rests down in the dirt. Uh, so then when uh, we wrap this trellis around, actually yeah it goes here and around and then up the trellis like so. And so if you measure the amount of vertical I'm able to get from here, It's about 50-ish inches of additional vertical. Now, we, we don't get a full 50 if you do the measurement from here to here. So we're gonna get a, a, about 40 inches of additional space. So that's three and a half extra feet. Now, on this particular trellis, I've got uh, about 10 feet of vertical on uh, the hop trellis uh, that goes up to the roof here. So if I gain an additional uh, uh, 40 inches, uh, then I can get this thing up to about 13 and a half, 14 feet. Um, and uh, nothing grows uh, below four feet on a, um, a hop vine. So all of this will not have any flowers on it. Now there are a lot of people that say you should cut back the growth and you should just strip these leaves right off and just uh, uh, let it so that the energy flows up the plant and you get more development up here. Now I've been cutting off the shoots. So the shoots are anything that's going to come up with new growth and I've been leaving it on the top here. So I want to get most of my shoot growth at the top of the plant and uh, avoid having it at the bottom here because uh, uh, that way you're focusing or the plant is focusing all its energy on building up vegetative growth on the upper part of the plant, yet you're still getting these energy factories uh, absorbing sunlight and, uh, and uh, creating more energy. So uh, it's just a little trick that I did to get myself a little bit more vertical in a more manageable amount of space so I can grow these in my backyard without having to build a massive trellis.
Okay, we're at the top of the vine. We're about 10 to 12 feet up in the air. And uh, as you can see here, this centennial has already grown past the top of the trellis that I've made. So this trellis goes up about 10 to 11 feet. Before you make your cut, you're going to want to sterilize the uh, the scissors that you're cutting with. This is just to make sure that no bacteria gets in that's uh, currently on the blade of the scissor itself. So once you make the cut, it's going to seal itself pretty quick, so you're not going to have to worry about uh, using any seals. I mean, some people say, uh, you know, you can buy a sealant product, so when you make your cut, I believe it's for bamboo, or you can uh, use beeswax because it's a, um, a non-invasive uh, sealant uh, product that you can use, but uh, really I mean it'll seal itself pretty quickly and you don't have to worry about it, but I use a butane torch And what I do is just simply run it over the blade And you're sterilized and that's it so just leave it uh, for a couple seconds to cool down And then you can make your cut with a sterilized scissor so here's your nodule, and the way that a, 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 a bind works is it will grow up this main stalk, up this main stalk here, and then these shoots will come out, and out of these shoots the hop flowers will be attached. So this is, these are the areas that I want to make sure are getting the maximum attention. So I'm actually going to cut this right below, and I'm going to hope that this actually stays put, and we shouldn't be getting any additional growth. So the way that the bind works is you've got these nodes at the top here, and these things will just keep on growing and keep on growing and keep on growing and they grow from the top not from the bottom so once it's grown uh, it'll uh, it'll increase in width but it won't increase in length so with this one here I want to cut this off because I don't want this to grow any higher or produce any more nodes Now I'm just going to do a mix quickly here and uh, show you how easy it is with our product line and um, uh, I'm using 7 milliliters per gallon of each of the veg uh, products as well I'm adding nature's candy uh, just to add a little bit of extra oomph with the um, amino acids anyway uh, I have this one cup measuring cup and uh, I'm not being entirely precise because this is just for my own garden so I'm gonna fill this up which is 240 and I need 260 of each product because I'm doing 7 milliliters per gallon uh, this is 38 uh, gallon reservoir and so if you do the math uh, I need just over a cup so I'm gonna do a cup and then just a little bit extra and I'll call it a day so you always start with your micro uh, to uh, stop things from uh, uh, separating so I'm gonna start with the micro and always shake your newts before you mix them One cup, plus a little bit. Okay. And then after I do my micro, I always move on to my plant food. So we're using Ramos Grow Formula. Okay, and I need uh, 260 of that, so I'm going to do the same thing. Nitrogen booster, so with Magnifical, I need 260 of that. one is Velo Kelp. I love this product. It's just full of everything that your plants love. Okay, I need 260 of that. Okay. 
don't care. And just to feed any bac uh, bacteria that's living in the dirt or beneficials, I'm going to throw some nature's candy in. Now it's not necessary during the veg cycle. So nature's candy. Not necessary during the veg cycle, but uh, what the hell. It does help if you have any beneficials, because the sugar in it will help with feeding those, so I'll do 260 of that. Okay, and that's it for your feed. I'm just going to stir this up and then we're going to test the pH and the ppm. Okay, now we're going to test the ppm using this Blue Labs uh, uh, ppm reader. And uh, I just finished uh, mixing in all the nutrients, and so we'll test to see what our ppm is at. Hopefully uh, we're sitting around 900 to 1200, somewhere around there. 1200 might be on a little bit high side, but I'm hoping for something around 1000. Okay. 1020, looking pretty good. I'll go with that. Okay. And now to test our pH. Here we get, hopefully we'll be around 6.5. Okay. And we're sitting at 6.4, so that's good enough. Next all I need to do is open the valve on the hose and uh, let the solution run into the garden. As you can see it's dripping into the garden and the thing I like about this system is you're not watering directly on the plants. And so it'll go into the root bed instead and it'll keep it nice and moist and uh, that's about it. It's very very simple. So because it's gravity fed in there it'll deplete all the way to the very very bottom at least the bottom of the uh, uh, the valve, and uh, yeah, that'll uh, create a nice little moist uh, uh, soil bed underneath the dry bed on top. So just a couple other plants that are being grown with Raymo nutrients. Uh, this is a bed of mint uh, that I use for marinades and uh, desserts, drinks, mojitos, whatever. And uh, it's growing really, really well. Now you never want to grow these things in a garden bed. Uh, if you've ever gardened before in your life, you'll know that these things are invasive as hell. So always grow them in a planter. But uh, this is looking really, really good. Last but not least, uh, the chili plant that was in the uh, greenhouse in the previous video, I've taken it out because this thing is just exploded. So we're sitting at about three feet tall, and I have no less than 50 chilies that I'm gonna get on this. It's just a monster. All grown with rainbow nutrients, and this is the real deal, guys.